afternoon, everyone. Welcome in Cafe Club and welcome to our program. Today, I'll be telling the story of the carrier. You know who's a carrier? He carries stuff for people. Well, I'm going to be using the Arab word, which is Lehmet. He's the carrier. So it has been told that there was a carrier. He was really special because of his job. Because he used to carry the skin of that sheep. He was stinking. Like, it smells so bad that no one comes next to him while he was working, while he was walking in the street. You only see him. Even the animals, they run away. So you can imagine how stinky he is. So one day, as usual, he wake up and go to work. When he was coming back home, he found a lady. She was covering her mouth, of course. She was waiting for him. She said, well, when are you done with your work? He said, first he was really shocked because someone is there talking to him, a human being. And he was like, well, I'm done at noon. He said, well, you will find me here at noon waiting for you. I have a job for you. Well, Hamad, he didn't ask questions. He said, maybe she, she has some things that she wants me to carry for her. The next day he came. While he was coming back home, he remembered that the lady is going to be meeting him. And actually, he found her meeting him. She said, she looked at him and told him, follow me. He kept following her until they get to this palace. It was so beautiful from the outside. Then a big gate opened. There was two rows of people banding for that lady and the Hamam. The Hamam was like, is this for me? He was looking back. If there's a prince or something where there's no one, it's just me and her. Maybe she's a princess. Keep walking to get to that palace. The palace was more beautiful from the inside than the outside. It was really colorful and really clean and glimmer. So they kept walking inside. Then another big gate opened. <coughs> there were two people hand in nice, like having nice clothes and two others took the hammer from his hand. And they were like, why are you taking me? The lady told him, don't ask questions. Just do as they told you. And this is advice I'm going to give to you. Never ask questions while you are in this place. Just do whatever we ask you to do. He was really scared. He said, but just tell me why are you taking me? Well, we're taking you to take a bath because you're snuff. So we need to fix that problem. They took him. He got the bath. They were, he wore nice clothes. Really nice clothes. But you can think that he was the Hamad who just walked in the palace. He was like a prince. He really liked it. But he said, well, if I'm not going to ask questions and get this, I don't want to ask questions. <coughs> and then the servant was waiting for him again. He said, follow me. They got to this other big gate. It opened. And there, there was any kind of food you can imagine. A lot of fruits, a lot of dishes, chicken. Anything you can imagine was in that room. He turned and he said, Should I? She said, Just go there, serve yourself. It's all for me. He said, Yes. He went there, started eating. He was so hungry. He started eating, really enjoying all the food. She came to him again. She said, Are you not? Are you full? He said, Oh, yes. I think I'm full for today. He said, Well, follow me. She grabbed his hand. And then they got to another big gate. It opens again. And there, there were beautiful ladies dancing and singing and calling on him. They were calling him to sit. But where? To sit in a place where there is a beautiful princess that she was looking at him. And she told him, come and sit next to me. And he was like, you talking to me? He was looking at me. me? She said, yes, you. Come. He found the thing who sat next to her. He said, if it's a dream, I just want to live it. I don't want to wake up. I'm not going to pinch myself. I just want to live it. And he didn't ask any questions. Then the priest had told him, did you enjoy your bath? And he was like, yes. Did you enjoy the food? He said, hell yes. And he was like, all these beautiful ladies are just for you. And me too. We will be here to please you. She said, well, okay, just please me. <laughs> when they were done, she actually grabbed his hand and they went upstairs. And they spent the night together. 
without going to details, you know what happened. And the next morning, he found two people, the same one who took him to the shower, they were there. They took him to take the bath, they gave him the nice clothes. Again, they took him to the place of food, he, he ate. And then, they take him to the other room, the beautiful girls, just in some tanking, and the princess, she was waiting for him there. She grabbed his hand and asked him to sit next to him. They danced, laughed, until it was bedtime, and they went <laughs> upstairs. The third day, the same thing, bath, food, dancing and singing, spending the night. The fourth day, he wakes up, but no one was in the room. He said, well, maybe I'm that clean that they forgot that I need a bath. He walks in, but no one was in the palace. He was wondering, wondering, but no one was in the palace. N not a servant. No one. He said, well, where did everybody go? Then he was passing in a window. He looked. And he actually found the first big gate that opened for him, opened again. And there's two rows of people again. And they're dancing. But there, there was a prince who was coming in the palace. He said, I wonder who's that prince. I've never seen him. And I thought that was the only man in this palace. He was so, I would say he's beautiful, not even handsome. He was so beautiful. He would keep walking and suddenly that servant took his hand and grabbed him so hard and took him downstairs. He said, where are you taking me? He said, don't ask questions and just follow me. She took his hand and locked him in a room upstairs. She said, wait here until we come back for you. So the Hamad stopped thinking, what's wrong? Is this dream is becoming a nightmare or what? What's wrong? Why she took me here? Why am I? I'm like a prisoner. And then someone opened the door. It was the princess. And he said, well, what's going on? What's happening? She said, well, you must be confused. But first, she asked to God, take off those nice clothes and give him back his old clothes. And he was like, but why? Did they do something wrong? Why are you bringing me back my old, school, my old clothes? He said, you did nothing bad. I will tell you why. He wore the same clothes. He came back stinky again. He said, well, now, she opened the door. He said, you see this door? But before you walked out from the palace, I will tell you why everything you've been doing this, you did it, and why I brought you to this palace. Because you deserve to know the truth. He said, well, yes. He said, well, did you see the man walking into the palace? He said, yeah, that prince? Yes, well, he's the prince of this palace, and I'm his wife. Since he's your husband, why you brought me to the palace? Why you spent three nights with me? He said, well, here's the story. One night, I was sleeping in my bed next to my husband, with my prince. Suddenly, I woke up in the middle of the night. I couldn't find him next to me. And I went, I was looking for him in the palace. I kept looking and looking, but I didn't find him. I got thirsty and I went to the kitchen to, go, to get some water. And suddenly, I found my prince with my maid in the kitchen. And since that day, I said, I'll make sure I'll get the stinkiest person. I'll get it. <laughs> and pay him back. <laughs> And good job. <laughs> you really, <laughs> you were a good help. Well, you, there is no more stinky than you in the town. <laughs> well, that, that's why I choose you. And thank you for the service. And she shut the door. <laughs> well, usually there's morals from our story. <laughs> the one in this story is. The what? Yeah, just to be. <laughs> Actually, it's more specific for men. You need to really be careful for women pay back. They can be double. <laughs> <laughs> or stick here. Thank you. Guys.